joke. <laughs> it's not a good one, just be prepared. So it's an elevator joke, which means you only have enough time to tell the joke while you're in the elevator, right? Um, so a friend uh, in the elevator, uh, new friend, right, because we just met as we got on the elevator, says, what's green and not big? <clears throat> This is a participative um, joke as well. <laughs> Anybody? Light green. <laughs> right? It's a, it's a simple one, but it's really good, right? <laughs> I, I didn't prepare that either, by the way. <laughs> We got some hecklers in the audience. So. <laughs> We're just waiting for a couple of critical players to our party today. So. <laughs> this is always the awkward part. I know, right? <laughs> You're doing great. Keep going. Well, thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony will begin in a few moments. Please um, remain seated. It says take your seat, but we're already there, right? Um, but if you haven't already done so, please silence your cell phones. I, f I figure that's always a gift to give, so thank you. <coughs> please rise for the arrival of the official party, presentation of colors, and remain standing for the national anthem, followed by the invocation by Chaplain Tinsley. <coughs> Who's the colors? Forward. Arms. Forward. Arms. Present Punk. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light? What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave. Or the land of the free and the home of the brave. For arms, colors, coaster, park. Good afternoon, everyone. At this time, I'd like to invite you to pray with me in your fate as I pray in mine. It's Father God, we gather in this retirement ceremony. We pause to give you thanks and to seek your blessing. Thank you, Terry Dilly. Thank you for her life, 
for her 33 years of federal service, for her commitment to us and to our country. Thank you for bestowing your blessings upon her and the positive impact she has on her people. Much as we might like her to stay, we also know that the time comes and will come when we all move on to that place called retirement. Lord, we want to send her out with our blessings and yours, with our appreciation and thanks, and your care and company. As Miss Terry, her husband Robert, Eric, Crystal, Roland, Freckles, Alexa, Akira, and Aaron begin to walk down this new path called retirement, may they know that you are with them always, even unto the ends of the earth. These and all things we pray in your holy name. Amen. Thank you to the Color Guard 316th Force Support Squadron Honor Guard Joint Base Andrews and to Miss Chapman for the beautiful singing of the National Anthem. Thank you to Chapton Tinsley for those inspiring words. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. <laughs> Good afternoon, distinguished guests, senior leaders, ladies and gentlemen, and family, virtual and in person. On behalf of our host for today's ceremony, the Honorable Michael J. McCord, welcome. I'd like to extend a special welcome to Miss Dilly's family, husband Bob, mother Sharon, siblings Andrea, Jim, Chris, and their families, welcome. I had an opportunity to meet you all, and I felt a great energy from everyone wanting to be here to support Miss Dilly today. Also, a special welcome to our host, the Honorable Michael J. McCord, Deputy Undersecretary, Comptroller, and Chief Financial Officer, and the Honorable Kathleen S. Miller, Deputy Undersecretary, Defense Comptroller. My name is Joni Youngberg, and I am the Regional Director for the Defense Contract Audit Agency Central Region. It is a privilege for me to be the Mistress of Ceremonies as we recognize and honor Ms. Terry L. Dilley for her distinguished career of 33 years. Ms. Dilley began her federal service at the Air Force Audit Agency, where I see she has several in the audience. There are participants from that, um, where she served for much of her career. She was stationed in Texas, Hawaii, California, I'm not done yet, Seattle, Maryland, and the Pentagon, and audited a wide variety of projects, some she can't talk about, even going to exotic locations such as Diego Garcia. But she wondered, what would life be like beyond the Department of Defense? So she moved over to the U.S. Postal Service, Office of Inspector General. I'm guessing mail fraud is a fascinating subject, <laughs> or maybe not, as she went right back to Air Force Audit. She later moved to U.S. Transportation Command as a J-8 and has culminated her career as the director of the Defense Contract Audit Agency. When Ms. Dilley joined DCAA, we as an agency held our collective breath for a moment, as I'm sure many do with any new leadership. It didn't take long, though, for us to breathe a sigh of relief, and not only that, feel a new Christmas in the air. And it wasn't this time of year either. So, <laughs> Ms. Dilley came into our organization and quickly assessed what made DCAA successful. Where we had some gaps, she asked our leadership team an important question. What are we accepting which isn't working for us that we haven't stopped to challenge. Something I might compare this to is when we, me, run an errand to the hardware store, casually stop by the garden center, and come home with a new plant. But we don't immediately have a place for that plant. So we sit it down, maybe in the kitchen or the living room, because we plan to find the perfect spot for it. Yet we walk around it every day, and before long, we forget that it doesn't really fit there. We normalize it, and we, it becomes part of our every day. With any organization, I believe there are some plants, like DCAA had. This is one question, what are we accepting, which isn't working for us, that we haven't stopped to challenge? That one question forced us to perform a solid self-assessment and identify some critical areas for improvement. Under Ms. Dilley's leadership, we reassessed antiquated models for measuring the value we provide to the department. She helped us remove self-imposed barriers we placed regarding services we could perform or couldn't perform in the acquisition landscape. She also asked us to look at how we were taking care of our employees and if there were actions we could take to make some processes less onerous. She invested time and energy into our leadership team 
to build our strengths and elevate our relationships so that we could break down barriers and build new structures that work for DCAA. We are able to see all the furniture, maybe not all of it, most of the furniture and rugs in the room, rearrange how we use the spaces, find the perfect place for the plant. It's doing much better now that it has a window seat. Her legacy will reach beyond the time she spent as our director, which I think is one of the most impactful things I can say about any leader. There is a quote from the Wizard of Oz. After Dorothy has endured the trials she went through, it says, you've always had the power, my dear. You just had to learn it for yourself. I think Terry Dilley saw the potential and provided the environment for DCAA to learn it for ourselves. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce the Honorable Michael J. McCord. Um, thank you so much, Joni, and I want to echo you in commending an excellent rendition of the National Anthem and also for thank you for the invocation. And I just want to pick up on your, um, your mention of furniture, the difference between hosting the event in your personal life uh, versus in this official capacity is I did not set up all the chairs and arrange everything and I'm not going to clean up afterward either. So <laughs> it's a lot it's a lot easier to host in, in, in this sense than in, in the sense I'm used to at our, at our house. Um, so good afternoon. It's a privilege to uh, be here today with Terry. Great to see so many familiar faces here and also, uh, you know, see your family here. Um, I've had the privilege of working with closely with Terry for a couple of years now and have been impressed with your dedication, your intellect, your unwavering commitment to mission. Uh, as you've heard a little bit of, Terry's had a long distinguished career in government service spanning over 30 years, more than 20 of those at Air Force Audit Agency, holding various leadership positions, including Assistant Auditor General and Chief of Security and Special Program Audits. I, I did not work with her there. I had the first had the pleasure of working with Terry when she was at Transcom. Uh, and I think that experience gave her a useful uh, customer background, if you will, a little bit of uh, that she brought to the DCAA uh, organization. Uh, Terry, in either case, has always set a high bar for excellence. Her unwavering commitment to mission and our warfighters is, is inspiring, and her innovative spirit has been the catalyst for improving processes and systems, as Joni was referencing throughout her career. Uh, with our team, she's been an invaluable member of the department team and specifically of ours for the last few years. As she has tackled every challenge with grace and determination and found a way to turn obstacles into opportunities. You can tell a lot about anyone by how they treat their, their team and as you can see both by the turnout here today uh, and by her career as a whole, Terry has always sought to lift up the people around her and that dedication to growth and excellence has set a tone at DCA uh, that I'm very proud of. When I selected her as director, I knew she was the right person for this demanding job. DCA, as you probably know, especially if you're from the family, is the largest federal audit organization, does worldwide work, not just for DOD, but also for many other federal agencies who l lack the capacity by themselves to have this capability. It wouldn't make sense to recreate a bunch of little DCA, so they're a government-wide asset. It's also an agency that, because of what they do, often comes under media scrutiny, as does any watchdog, uh, it, it, you know, in their role of ensuring that companies aren't taking advantage of the U.S. government. And on the front lines of fighting and preventing waste, fraud, and abuse, that puts you, that puts you in the spotlight a lot, and that's a, that's a Herculean task, especially given the size. Uh, I probably don't want to go down the road of reciting the statistics about how big we are, but uh, I'll just do a few. Uh, you know, we, we would be approximately the 30th biggest country in the world if our, if our budget was a GDP. We have over $3 trillion of assets, over 70% of the federal government's physical assets, buildings, equipment, you know, things that are not land are in the Defense Department. So we have just an enormous scope of material that is in the purview of, uh, of DCA because all that material is qu acquired from the private sector in some way, shape, or form. So it's a critical agency within DOD, and its mission of ensuring the department uses taxpayer dollars efficiently and effectively is more important now than ever. Under Terry's leadership, DCA has made significant strides in, in improving performance and delivering value to the department. So as her time with us comes to a close, I want to highlight a few of the things she's accomplished. 
One of Terry's most significant accomplishments as DCA director has been her ability to improve the agency's primary performance indicators, something we do actually look at, right? Under her leadership, DCA has, has achieved over 20% increases on several key indicators, including a 36% increase in examination of dollars, a 24% increase in audit exceptions, 26% increase in net savings, and 20% increase in return on investment. That's a remarkable achievement and a testament to Terry's leadership and the hard work of the entire team, since not even an agency head can do, can do it alone. She's also pushed executives to focus on having a strategy to guide their work, to guide their audit work. She did this by publishing a FY24-30 to 30 strategic plan, laying the groundwork for a cycle of continuous improvement. She led her team to create an integrated master schedule to track progress toward these goals, and eight initiatives focused on process improvement and workforce were implemented. All are close to completion and already making positive impacts on, on her agency. Terry has also been instrumental in modernizing DCA. Under her leadership, the Chief Digital and AI Officer, or CDAO, was established to manage, explore, and leverage new technology, such as artificial intelligence and robotic process automation, to improve the efficiency of the audit process and, and you know, take some of the more, more uh, repetitive tasks off of the workforce to free up their time. Last October, DCA aud- adopted and configured new audit management software called Epic, which I understand was the first in, in, in decades. Terry has also been a phenomenal uh, relationship builder, starting with her employees. She strongly advocates for her employees in her in- interactions with me and has implemented new programs to create a more positive work environment. As a result, DCA has seen a significant increase in employee morale and productivity, increasing employee output by 20%. She led progress. Uh, as have several agencies heads have had to do this right in the face of COVID and and post-COVID, both of which were headwinds, I would say, where the changes of established patterns of work have been challenging for management and employees both, especially because we didn't just revert back after COVID to old ways of doing things, but we have a new a new future of work, if you wanna if you want to call it that. A future of work, future of telework, patterns continue to evolve. With a large, diverse, and dispersed DCA organization, this has been a particularly challenging uh, leadership task for Terry and her team, but one they have handled very well. The department's relationships with Congress and industry and internal stakeholders are in good place under her, under her leadership as she turns over the reins. She has successfully re-engaged with congressional leaders, resulting in dialogue and invitation for future discussions. Her efforts to enhance communication with industry and other, other stakeholders in the department have also opened channels for collaboration. So with all that said, it's now time for Terry to focus on the other even more important relationships, those with her family and friends and horses, many of which, not, not counting the horses, are here today, including her husband, Bob, uh, mother, Sharon. Yeah, that's not allowed here, I don't think. Uh, stepson, Eric, and grandson, Roland, and her sisters and brothers, nieces and nephews. Terry, I want to express my, my sincere gratitude for your service to our country. You have positively impacted the Department of Defense, and your legacy will continue for years to come. I wish you and your family all the best as you transition to retirement. So please uh, join me in congratulating Terry on her extraordinary contributions. (laughs) All right. I believe now we have uh, some things to give you. Thank you, Mr. McCord. It is now my pleasure to introduce Mr. Daniel F. McMillan. Mr. McMillan is a retired member of the Air Force Senior Executive Service who served with and mentored Ms. Dilley throughout her career. Thank you, Joni. Terry, Ellen, and I are so pleased to be able to share today with you and Bob. And I am honored that you asked me to make a few comments. Did you mean a few comments? (laughs) Okay, let me just say that John Bruther is still giving pretty high odds on the over a few comments bets. I am honored, especially looking at this audience. Uh, What a great and standing room only crowd. Well, what else would you expect this event is to honor Terry? Terry, I assure you that the crowd size has nothing to do with the fact that three quarters of the audience are auditors (laughs) and that there happens to be free food both here and at the (laughs) 
party afterwards. It has nothing to do with that. Okay, no more auditor jokes. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I've come to know Terry very well professionally and personally and could spend a very long time citing her numerous accomplishments and relating many stories, but I'm going to limit my comments to three areas. First, mom, mom, and the rest of the family. We all know how modest Terry is, so I need to make sure that when you go back to Iowa, you have a clear understanding of what a uh, big shot Terry really is. <laughs> Honorable McCord and Joni already listed a lot of great things Terry has accomplished, and you will hear even more when she receives a medal for Distinguished Civil Service. Distinguished st Civil Service. But let me add a little bit more context. Last time I saw you was when we promoted Terry to her first SES job several years ago in San Antonio. Does a good party, and many of the people here were at that party as well. Becoming an SES, just becoming an SES, was a big deal. Here's some numbers for the auditors. There are 2 million federal civil servants and only 7,700 SESs. That's 0.35%. She was then promoted to the Tier 2 SES level, of which there are only 2,000 out of 2 million. Then she was promoted to the highest SES level, tier three, and there are only 1,500 out of 2 million, or 0.05%. You auditors are eating that up. <laughs> <laughs> then there's only a handful of tier three SESs that attain the rank of agency head, which Terry is at DCAA, where she led governments, I would say governments, premier auditing organization of 4,000 professionals working at 300 locations around the globe. Let's go back to the audience. The mere presence of Honorable McCord, Honorable Miller, who represent the pinnacle of the SES Corps, the other 40 SESs and general officer level executives from across the OD, and the standing room only crowd here in the Hall of Heroes is testimony to the level of accomplishments and impact Terry has had in her career. Terry's a really big, big deal. Next, I want to acknowledge Bob. Who's Bob? Bob's <laughs> Terry's husband. <laughs> Wait a minute. Terry's Bob's wife. Uh, first, let's remember that, that Bob had his own accomplished military career, which included leadership positions in AFAA, a two-auditor couple. <laughs> I haven't been an auditor, so bear with me, right? Uh, hmm, how about those exciting dinnertime audit discussions? <laughs> Did you see what the FASB published today? <laughs> no, but I heard that the Army is confident that they will get a modified opinion by 2075. <laughs> no way! Sorry, a little off script there. Sorry, sir. Uh, Bob was instrumental in Terry's success, and I got to witness some of it. Bob's been a mentor, a coach, a champion, a confidant, and the sounding board that Terry needed throughout her career. Bob, thank you for helping Terry become who she is and for sharing so much of her time with us. Lastly, I represent the audience by saying thank you to Terry for the impact you have made on our careers and our lives. Joni mentioned during her introduction, my introduction that I was the person who mentored Terry throughout her life. Very true. But I received as much or more from her. Terry's ability to mentor up, across, and down, within and outside her current organization is remarkable. She's a poster child for mentoring by example, as a process zealot and a workforce advocate. She's an expert at positive reinforcement mentoring. Sorry you didn't get that job, let's work on what you need to do. <coughs> She's an expert at not being afraid to give tough love mentoring. And she's a master at 
Emperor, you have no clothes mentoring. <laughs> a lot of heads nodded north and south because I suspect that most of you in this room have felt her mentorship. I contend that just in this room, there are 31 two-star and above SESs and GOs <coughs> that have been more successful in their careers because of Terry's mentorship. Show of hands. There are nine in this room SESs that are SESs because of Terry's mentorship, absolutely because of it. Show of hands, you know who you are. <laughs> and the key one is 13 GS15s and below that will become SESs. Do you know who you are? <laughs> <laughs> but it's because of her mentorship and that will be Terry's true ongoing legacy. So Terry, we thank you for your mentorship and your friendship. We wish you the best as you move into the next period of your life. If you can't help yourself and you must go back to work, you'll be in unbelievably high demand. There are at least three top tier consulting firms in the audience, <laughs> including standing at the podium, <coughs> who will be desperate to hire you. Thank you, Mr. McMillan. Ms. Dillane, Mr. McCord, please move to the center of the stage for the presentation of awards. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. Honorable Ms. Cord will now present the Department of Defense Distinguished Civilian Service Award. The citation reads, Ms. Terry L. Dilley is recognized for distinguished civilian service as Director, Defense Contract Audit Agency, Office of the Undersecretary of Defense Comptroller. Ms. Dilley has demonstrated exceptional commitment in support of delivering unmatched capability to our warfighters while protecting taxpayer dollars. As Director, she reversed a five-year negative trend in the Defense Contract Audit Agency's primary performance indicators and realized $3.8 billion in net savings. She reestablished DCA's relationship with congressional leaders. As a director, program an analysis and financial management for United States Transportation Command, Ms. Dilley's vision for operationalizing financial management enabled a sustained 95% readiness for C-17s and 85% for C-5s, leading to the evacuation of over 126,000 people from Kabul, Afghanistan in under 17 days. As Assistant Auditor General Operations and Systems for the Air Force Audit Agency, Ms. Dilley led with expertise to deliver critical cost data on IT expenditures within 60 days and facilitated major organizational changes, including reallocating 16,000 military members to cyber operations. The impressive accomplishments of Ms. Terry L. Dilley reflect great credit upon herself and the Department of Defense, signed Lloyd J. Austin III, Secretary of Defense. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Honorable McCord will now present Ms. Dilley with her retirement certificate. The certificate reads, the certificate is presented to Terry L. Dilley upon your retirement from the government of the United States of America following 33 years of loyal service, signed Michael J. McCord, Under Secretary of Defense, <laughs> Comptroller. <laughs> Honorable McCord will now present a letter from the Secretary of Defense to Ms. Dilley, recognizing her for her 33 years of service. The letter reads, congratulations and thank you for 33 years of dedicated service to the Department of Defense. You have bettered our country, personifying the values that guide our democracy while defending the homeland, 
protecting our people, and preserving our way of life. You made an enormous difference in the lives of countless others, and our shared prosperity is a direct result of your unwavering commitment. On behalf of the entire Department of Defense, I extend my sincere appreciation to you and your family for all your sacrifices over the years. We wish the best of luck in the next chapter. Sincerely, Lloyd J. Austin. Ms. Dilley will now receive a letter of congratulations from the Comptroller thanking her for her services. The letter reads, on behalf of the Department of Defense and a grateful nation, congratulations on your retirement. Throughout 33 years of service to the Department of Defense, you demonstrated unwavering dedication to the men and women in uniform and the American people. You were a consummate professional in your position as Director of Defense Contract Audit Agency rising to the challenges with creativity and adaptability. Your commitment to excellence ensured consistent, high-quality customer service in the Department of Defense. We are truly grateful for your commitment to strengthening the financial management workforce and supporting the effective and efficient use of department resources. Thank you for your many years of service. Best wishes for a long and happy retirement and continued success. Signed, Michael J. McCord. Honorable McCord will now present Ms. Dilley with a U.S. flag flown over the Pentagon on September 18th in her honor. Thank you, Honorable McCord. At this time, it is my pleasure to present to you Ms. Terry L. Dilley, Department of Defense, Senior Executive Service, retired. Are you ready to sing? You want the me Air to Force. say my remarks? Do you want to? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she's, gonna, she's gonna skip because I've been trying to get anybody to read these for me today and they keep telling me I have to do it so I want to take a, a, a thank you all of you for being here today it means a lot to Bob and I that you're here uh, special thanks to Angelique Leslie Al they're all in the back they're hiding in the back room Chris Joni Dave Fontaine a great rendition sir to you for officiating um, I'm really standing here today filled with gratitude and reflection as I celebrate retirement. It's clear, it's a bittersweet moment. Um, it, you know, when you announce, you, you decide a year out, it gives you time to kind of process it. So, um, but it's one that really allows me to acknowledge the journey I've had. You guys heard a little bit about that um, and the people who made it possible. I really had an amazing experience uh, spending time in five different organizations, the Air Force, U.S. Transcom, uh, DCAA, and I've always said that it takes a village um, for me to help help me do what I do. I wanted to share a little bit about that. So it really started with my great-grandmother who fled Mexico um, at 16 years old after being sold by her family at 14 to a rich Spaniard. By the age of 16, she'd had two children by that same person um, and fled with my grandmother, who was a baby, and her older sister, who was two, on her hips. She settled into life in Illinois, uh, married, and went on to have, have a family that totaled 12 children, uh, all of those children, with the exception of my grandmother, who had tuberculosis <clears throat> at, uh, as a teenager and two sons that they lost, went on to complete a college education. Think about that, all of them, right? So, so to me, they were the foundation, right? They're the American dream. They taught me to keep my head down. They taught me to ignore the naysayers, work hard, be humble. I work on that some days. Some of you <laughs> might not think I'm as humble, right? And you can achieve your goals. Uh, to my mom, Mama Sita, you're doing good. No Kleenex so far. I got some, a whole pack. Um, thanks, uh, and to Dad, who's watching down on us. Thank you for instilling in us the values of hard work, integrity, and perseverance. 
you taught our small tribe our doesn't seem small in here today mm -hmm. right <sighs> to stop have fun uh, you gave us freedom to explore and discover ourselves and really our purposes uh, you affirm that dedication leads to success and I'll carry those lessons with me into this very exciting next chapter of my life I look forward to spending some more time with you probably some margaritas maybe a little bit of Zumba maybe um, to my siblings Andrea Jim and Chris thank you for your love and encouragement you've been my steadfast support system reminding me of the importance of family uh, no matter where we our paths have taken us and in a way any of you guys have siblings in a way only siblings can they help keep you humble working on that humility thing right so the example that I have to offer um, was when I left home. Remember that? It was only 33 years ago, Jim. <laughs> they all made a bet that I would return home within two weeks. Nobody gave me more than two weeks. Um, but it's now been 33 plus years. I have not moved home. I think you still owe me whatever you bet. <laughs> plus interest, and I have a bunch of accountants and auditors that can help you do that calculation here. By the way, they've never told me what they bet, so if anybody can get it out of them at Highline later, I will split it with you. <laughs> to my husband, Bob, your service in the Air Force has been a guiding light throughout my career. Uh, your unwavering support and dedication to our country have inspired me every day. Thank you for being my rock, my partner, my biggest cheerleader, my sounding board on many days, my sanity. He wanted to add PETA in there. I don't know why. <laughs> I promise you I've never called him that. Probably haven't. My achievements are your achievements. I would not be here without you. Looking forward to sharing this next chapter with you. We've traveled five moves, 9,500 miles. We've got one left, about 1,400 miles to go, and I promise. I won't move you again. <laughs> Promise. And that hopefully in the future that we'll only be putting miles in this. <laughs> All right. And spending some time with Eric, Crystal, and Roland. <clears throat> I'm going to shift a little bit now to the Pathfinders that went before for me. Uh, Miss Miller, Pat, Audrey. Sharon, Valerie, Donna, you blazed a trail that empowered and enabled many women, many women in this room, uh, to follow in your footsteps. Thank you for your guidance, mentorship, and your friendship. You played a very pivotal role in not only shaping my professional journey, but also my personal growth. Your dedication to excellence has been an inspiration, and I'm proud to have worked with you, learned from you, and been part of your teams. To Dan. Thank you for keeping it short. <laughs> Everybody knows how hard that was for you. <laughs> Words can't express what your guidance, mentorship, and friendship have meant. You, you heard me. You empowered me. You even let me be a little belligerent, probably a lot belligerent at times. Um, but it helped me grow. Thank you for your leadership, uh, simply. And thank you to Ellen, who generously shares Dan with DOD. So one of my favorite things about working in the department and moving around as much as I did, 10 moves um, as a civilian career is unusual, is really all the people that you meet that you have the privilege to serve with um, that become lifelong friends. It starts out as work conversations, long hours, tough decisions, uh, turn into laughter and lifetime memories. I could really literally list off everybody's person name in this room, but I want to recognize a few, Marianne and Mick, uh, Mickey out there in virtual land, Teresa and Bill, T, Chica, you know who you are, uh, Carmen, David, Donna, Melissa, I promise I'm going to read all the names, Margo, <laughs> D, Lance, Nancy, Deb, Penny, Leslie, Cindy, Joni, thank you for your friendship, the house sitting, the dog sitting, even the freckles sitting on occasion for a few of you, um, and really just helping me um, on my, in my career. I see some golf time, maybe some wine time. That's wine without the age for a change. There's like the other kind of wine in our future. To the leaders that I've had the honor to serve General, under General Lyons, General Van Ovos, Mr. McCord, thank you for your wisdom, counsel, and trust. You're all amazing and a true embodiment of servant leadership. I'm almost
almost done. I'm so excited. To the leadership team um, at DCAA and my colleagues across the Air Force Audit Agency, U.S. Transcom, OSD Comptroller, and DFAS, a lot of different tribes I got to be part of. Uh, many of you are here. Thank you for your partnerships, your guidance, your camaraderie. I've really been fortunate to work along some of the brightest, most dedicated professionals. And you challenged me, inspired me, and supported me throughout my career. So thank you, all of you. <laughs> and finally, yes, finally, I like that word. Um, to the men and women of the Defense Contract Audit Agency, Air Force Audit, U.S. Transcom, OSD Comptroller, that perform the mission every day, the boots on the ground, you are the foundation which makes the Department of Defense the best military in the world, bar none. Without you, the department doesn't work. I learn more from each of you every day. A lot of you are pretty good at mentoring up as well um, than I could ever hope to repay. I admire your strength, your talent, your tenacity, and your heart. Breathe, give me the breeze signal. <laughs> Continue to take care of each other, the mission, and remember every once in a while, have fun. It has been an absolute honor to, to serve along you. Breathe. I'm almost done. I have like one little paragraph left. Um, really all, thank you for being part of my village. Here's to the future and, and for all of you who continue to serve, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Please join Miss Dilly in singing the Air Force song. <laughs> Lance, you're gonna help on this one, right? Okay. Off we go into the wild blue yonder, climbing high into the sun. Here they come, seeming to meet our thunder. Adam the retirement ceremony. Terry and Bob invite you to join them and their family as they celebrate her retirement at a reception. That's the auditor free food. Um, <laughs> from 4 to 7 p.m. today at the Highline r and in Crystal City. I understand there's more than one, Crystal City. A map and directions are also available in the back of the room. Please join Terry and Bob in the front of the room to extend your fond farewell and best wishes. There are light refreshments at the back of the room. Thank you all for your attendance and sharing this memorable event today.